If you don't already have a personal portfolio website, you honestly might be missing out on a lot of opportunities. So many employers want to see what you've done in the past. And while a lot of people think personal portfolio websites are really only for artists and photographers, it's actually great for pretty much anybody out there. I've seen scientists benefit from this, making a website linking to all of their different published articles. I've also seen a lot of professionals, anybody who is an engineer or a marketing agent or really anything you are, you can make a personal portfolio website and just show your projects in different tabs, different pages, and make it very easy to understand what you've done in the past. It's a great way to professionally present your work, and it's something that I know a lot of employers really appreciate. So in this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to make your own personal portfolio website. It's very easy to do, requires no coding, no extra knowledge of anything, and we are actually going to be using Wix for this. So you guys can click the link in the top of the description below. That's our affiliate link, and it'll take you over to wix.com. And we, I'm going to head over to my desktop now, and we're gonna get started. Okay, so here we are on my desktop, and the first thing we wanna do is actually go down to the link in the top of the description of this video and click on that. It should open up in a new tab, or you could type in santrellmedia.com slash Wix website. Our affiliate link will take you over to Wix. That way, we're just making sure we're all starting from the same place. You have a giant blue button here. Uh, the background might look a little bit different, but we're gonna click on start now and create our account. So I already have an account set up. I'm gonna start a new one just, for, uh, just to show you guys. So this wants us to log in. I'm gonna sign up instead. Uh, we're gonna type in a new email. And that brings us right here. So we're gonna click on this blue button. We're gonna say get started. It's gonna ask uh, what you're making your website for. So for me, I'm just gonna say I'm making it for myself, a personal portfolio. It's my first time doing that. But again, it doesn't really matter which one you choose there. And then of course here is going to be uh, where we look for a personal portfolio. So we could say maybe I'm gonna be like a photographer. So I'm gonna say a personal personal site, personal uh, profile, portfolio, tons of options. And this is really just gonna help you choose in a second uh, the best theme for your website. So we're gonna say next, and that's going to take us right here. Now, between the two, even though there's a giant enticing blue button here, we actually wanna choose a template. We're gonna go over here and do it this way. You just have a lot more freedom when you're doing this. You have a lot more control over your website, uh, but it is a little bit extra, a little bit more work, so we're gonna do this though. So from here, personal portfolio, we have a lot of different options here, and you can choose any one of these. And of course, there are many other ones as well, so you can go uh, from the drop down and choose anything here, but I'm gonna go down and say that uh, as a photography website, maybe I'm very interested in this one. So we can go and view it. it. It looks like this. She has a video in the background. That looks really cool. And I'm going to say, yeah, I like this one. Let's edit this one. So that'll bring us into our editor. All right. So as you can see, honestly, within the first minute or so, we already have an account. We already have our website fully built. And then all we have to do is customize it, add our own images, add our own text, uh, and make it our own. So before I show you how to edit everything on your site, let's go through some of the fundamentals. So starting on the top, we have our settings across here. So the first thing, the site, uh, we can go and save that. It should save if you click save here. And we also have auto save on, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. But if you ever wanna go here, you can hit save. And the first time you save, it's going to make you name it. Uh, so we're gonna actually publish with a, a better domain in a second, but starting off, you can say Mike O'Brien Portfolio or whatever you wanna name your website uh, and just do that right there. So I'm gonna say done. It saves our website, that way we have it going uh, and continually auto saving. Then we can go to settings. And here, there's a lot of more advanced stuff if you wanna add a, a Gmail account or, or whatever you're looking for there. But I'm really just gonna go and add our icon. So the icon is really important. It's something that a lot of people forget. And if you look at the tabs on the top of your browser, even right now, you'll see like the little Wix logo next to Wix. Uh, you'll see like the YouTube logo next to a YouTube tab. And you want your own website to have your own logo up there. So if we go to settings, we go down to uh, add our icon and we can actually add something. It should be a small image, something probably similar to your logo. I'm just gonna upload an image right here, but it will actually have to upgrade to a premium plan in order to do that. So if I just click on upgrade to premium, it's something that, I mean, I recommend for almost every website anyway. I mean, you can have a website with Wix that you don't have to upgrade, but you have some limitations with that. So if you go down here, you'll see that like enterprise plans, business and e-commerce or website plans, three different options. Uh, and from here, there's a bunch of different ones. So I'm just gonna go uh, with the combo plan right here. If for a personal portfolio, typically that's all people really need. You get your custom domain, it removes all the ads, you have a decent amount of storage unless you have a lot of videos. And other than that, I mean, you're probably not running ads for your personal portfolio. You're probably not doing stuff like that. So for a lot of people, I think this is the one to go with. So I'm gonna select that. 
And of course, the pricing is lower for the longer you subscribe. So you can see here, uh, you're saving a significant amount of money for three years. If you plan on having this for a while, it's definitely worth doing that. Uh, because this is just a tutorial, I'm just going to do it monthly. Uh, the only difference with monthly is you don't get the free domain. All right, so once we upgrade, it actually prompts us to choose a domain for our website because you can do that right now. So you can type in uh, whatever domain you want. So I'm probably going to want to call this something like Michael Bryan Portfolio. Com. And maybe that's something that's available. Let's see if it is. It looks like it is. All right. So once you've upgraded your site and you got the domain, you can go up to settings and you should be able to add an icon. If for some reason it's not showing you the little blue, like little blue box here, you want to make sure that you go and verify your email. So check your email account, click any links there, and then go and publish that. And you should be able to upload an image. The image I'm going to choose is just going to be probably like the Santra logo, for example. So let's go and upload media. We can go and upload from our computer. And actually, I'm just going to use this coffee cup. That looks like that'll do just fine. So it's going to upload that image. It's going to resize it to make it a nice little icon on the top. And we're going to choose this file. So there we go. It's going to show up right next to our site, uh, the site title. And we're going to say save. All right. So now we're ready to actually edit our website. Now, there's other things on the top I didn't cover. Those are a little bit more advanced if you want to like hire a partner, stuff like that. Uh, but the next line down is actually more practical. What we're going to be doing in this video, the first thing is changing pages. So you can see you have multiple pages on here. You have a contact me, uh, about me. So if I go to about me, uh, you'll see that it has a lot of stuff right here. And we're going to change all of this later on. But let's go back to home. We can also toggle between desktop view and mobile view. Uh, if you think that everybody's going to be visiting your, your website on a desktop, then you are very mistaken. All of my websites, at least half of the traffic comes from mobile. But of course, that depends on what your niche is. So we're going to go back to desktop. I usually edit in desktop, but you want to frequently switch back and forth and make sure everything looks good in mobile. We can undo and redo stuff. So if you accidentally move something and you wish you didn't do that, you can undo it. And then we can actually zoom out and reorder. So the way websites are typically set up these days is in a strip layout. So you can see right here that we have like this is a strip down here. This is a strip. This is a strip down here. And you can see they just outline them in blue. And if you want this strip to be above that one, you can just click on the up arrow. Or if you want it to be below, you click on the down arrow. We can also delete a strip. We can duplicate that. Uh, and we can add more from here if we want. So we're going to exit this mode. But that's a great way to rearrange your website. It's typically one of the first things I do to make sure everything's set up right. But this theme right here, I think honestly looks pretty good. So I'm not going to change this template. Uh, and other than that, that's pretty much everything on the top bar. So we're ready to really start editing stuff in here. Uh, but let's just say, you know, we're going to go down to the left side. And I want to start off with the first thing, which is pages. And pages, you can actually switch between the pages you have. So contact me, about me, or home. Of course, you can do that up there as well. But here, you actually have more settings. So if we click on three dots, uh, you can actually go to settings there. And you have a couple things here. You can rename it. You can make it your home page. You can change the layout if you don't want a header and footer. You can go over to permissions to make it a hidden page that's maybe members only. A little bit more advanced. I would recommend leaving everything on everyone. And then we can go to SEO. So search engine optimization just means that you're really making your website easy for Google to know what it is. So that's pretty much all the settings I want to show you with this. Uh, but if we don't like a page, so let's just say the contact me page, we don't want it, you can click on the three dots and you can actually go down to delete it. And that's going to delete this page. And now we just have two pages, our home and our about me. Now if you want to add another one, first of all, let's get this away. If we want to add another one, we can click on add page. And it gives you a new page. And maybe this one is going to be a contact me page. So contact me, we can say done, and it's going to be a blank page. So you can click on the three dots again, go into settings, you can change everything here that you want to if you wanted to make this your home page, you could you could do that. But I'm actually going to go and just build this page uh, from other stuff. So going down the left side, we have background, which background I generally don't use image backgrounds for most pages, a really nice simple page sometimes does well with a, a video or an image background. Um, but for most of mine, I just leave a white background and I add stuff within the limits here. Then we can go down to add. And when I said you can add stuff, this is what I meant. You have a ton of different options here. Uh, when you hover over each one, it shows you even more options. So you have an image and you can add an image from collections or social or your uploads buttons. Again, you can have tons of different styles of buttons or you can just add things as pre-made strips. So for the about me thing uh, or the contact me page, we can start off with uh, maybe a strip. So I showed you the strip layout and it does make it very easy. So if we want to say maybe this one, we just click and we drag it over and it's going to attach it to the page. And there is our first strip. So within this strip, we can go and customize anything. So if you click on this, you can change the text and we can say contact, contact me. And then we can add a paragraph and this paragraph, we can just have whatever we want. I'm going to leave it as dummy text for now. But of course, you can edit the, the, the theme here, the font, the font size, we want this maybe a little bigger. 
and you can make it bold. You can do all kinds of different stuff. Let's make sure we highlight that when we do that to make it bold. Uh, and of course, all these settings are going to be, you know, pretty self-explanatory. If you hover over them, they tell you what they do. So changing the text color, changing the highlight color, so the background of the text, adding a link is another thing. So if I want like this word right here to link to uh, the About Us page, I can, I can highlight that, click on the link, and then go and make that a, a, a either a web address or a page on this website. Uh, so I want to link it to maybe About Me. And we can open a new window or the current window. I'm just going to say new window. We're going to say done. And now when somebody clicks on services, it'll open in a new window. Similarly, buttons have a lot of the same settings. If we go down here, we can change the text. We can change the link. We can change how it looks. So if you go to, to, to design, uh, you can change, you know, some basic stuff with the design. Customize it if you want. I'm not going to do that right now. I think that one looks pretty good. It's within the theme that I'm going for. And we can click on the link. So let's make sure this link goes to... Again, we could go to the page, which is the About Us page or About Me page. As you scroll down, we don't have anything below here. So let's talk about the other things we can add. So down here, let's just say we want to add another strip maybe. We can go and add a either maybe a testimonial strip. You can add a classic strip, maybe just a classic plain blank one. Let's go and add that below here. So we have a new strip. This one's blank, nothing here. And what we can do is start adding some other stuff. Maybe we want to add an image, maybe a button, maybe a gallery. So we could just say, let's, let's add a gallery. So let's go and add maybe like this gallery here. We can click and drag that over and it'll show up right there. Now, of course, you'll see that it's kind of not quite where we want it to be. So we can move it around. We can drag it down. We can put it maybe like right there and we can edit this gallery. So if we go and manage media, it'll allow us to select whatever we want. So we can add new media. Of course, they have a bunch right here, but I can add my own. So let's click on add media, add image, and let's actually go to upload media. So then we'll say done and we now have our gallery. And of course, like I said, you can resize it however you want. You can make it wider. So let's make it a lot wider. So it's like full width there. And so this is a cool gallery. So suddenly somebody can go and click through all of my images right here to see my work as a photographer. Uh, and this is in the contact me page. But of course, you can add this to any other page you want. And the other things you can add here, I'm not going to add, I'm not going to add all of them. But you guys see the idea, you can go and add some shapes, you can add interactive stuff, uh, you can add boxes, grids, music and video. And of course, if none of these are interesting to you, you can also go down to the Wix app market right here. And the app market allows you to do even more stuff. So you can go and add things like uh, Instagram integrations that work differently, uh, PDF viewer, all kinds of different stuff. You can in tons and tons of different apps, MailChimp. So if you're trying to collect emails, QuickBooks online, lots of stuff you can add. So let's go back to the home page and take a look at some of the other things we can do here. So from here, you'll see that they actually have like an image on the top. If you don't like that, you can click and drag anything. Uh, and the three of these are, are attached because they're in a container box. So we can resize a container box and uh, add more stuff in there or move it or whatever you want to do. And there's a lot of cool things you can do. I, I really recommend just kind of messing around with this. And over time, you'll start to learn a lot of the different things. We also have several different tutorials on our channel. One of them is like an hour and a half long. So if you guys want to know all the little details about how to do all the stuff like that, I recommend checking that video out. But otherwise, that's pretty much everything you'll want to know about how to make a personal portfolio website with Wix. Uh, very user friendly and you can really customize anything you want on here by just clicking and dragging it from the side or anywhere on the site. And of course, double clicking on stuff is going to allow you to edit the text, uh, change what it looks like and just really make this website into your own. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I wish you the best of luck with your personal portfolio. If you enjoyed it, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.